it's Ian Norman from Lonely Spec, and today I'm currently in Budapest, Hungary. On our flight over here, my girlfriend and I were trying to figure out what constellations we could see outside the window of the airplane. So we ended up spending uh, a large portion of the rest of the flight trying to figure out how to photograph the Milky Way from the window of the plane. And we ended up taking a couple test shots and it was actually possible to see the Milky Way Galactic Center. So in order to break down the techniques that we use for photographing the Milky Way from an airplane, I wanted to talk about some of the problems that we encountered and how we overcame them. The first and most obvious problem that we had to deal with was glare. So what we ended up doing was I ended up holding up a black jacket uh, up over the window and uh, my girlfriend Diana ended up holding the camera in between this jacket and the window and she made the exposures while I held the jacket over the camera to try and prevent the glare from the, uh, uh, from the inside of the cabin. So once we figured out how to deal with the glare, we had to figure out how to deal with the motion of the camera. So if we take an exposure that's too long, we end up coming out with a photograph that looks kind of like this. It just got a ton of motion blur in it. And if you take an exposure that's too short, you end up coming out with something that's really grainy and has a lot of noise in it. So we ended up finding that the kind of happy medium between too long of an exposure and too short of an exposure was something around one and a half to two seconds. As long as we braced the camera up to the window relatively well and the plane wasn't making any turns and there wasn't a lot of turbulence, we could come up with an exposure that had relatively good detail in the sky and a little bit of motion blur down on the ground. So once we figured out the limitations of exposure that we were constrained to, having to use a relatively short shutter speed so that we didn't have too much camera motion, but something that was long enough that we were actually collecting enough light, and then using the lowest F number that my lens could possibly go to, there wasn't a whole lot beyond that that I could do in a single exposure to try and increase the quality of the image. So we ended up deciding to use a technique of stacking, which is something that I use in a lot of my landscape astrophotography to increase the signal to noise ratio in an image and come out with a much cleaner image of the night sky. So instead of just taking a single photograph of the Milky Way, we ended up holding down the shutter and just took a whole bunch of exposures, just as many as we possibly could. So we had a lot of data that we were able to work with in our post-processing. And I'm gonna go ahead and walk through the processing technique that I used to turn these photographs into both these short time-lapse sequences and also some pretty cool final composites of the Milky Way with the Earth moving by at 450 knots below. Okay, so for my post-processing example, I wanted to show you a few of the exposures that I made. Uh, this exposure is one of the ones that I used for making one of my final composites, uh, one of the examples that you saw earlier in this video, and some of you might have seen this on my Instagram feed. This was a 1.3 second exposure and it was made at ISO 12800. My lens, is, it's a manual lens, it was stopped to f1.8. And this is probably an exposure that I wouldn't say would be typical for uh, most cameras. Um, it was made on the Sony a7S, which is especially good at high ISO settings. And so I actually wanted to run through the post-processing of these images with a photograph that isn't nearly as clean as, as this base exposure. This is gonna be a little bit more realistic in terms of the amount of noise that you would have to deal with. It's kind of a good example of what would be possible on maybe some more modest equipment like a slower lens, or maybe even a camera that doesn't do as well at high ISO uh, when compared to the Sony a7S, which is what I was using. If we go to uh, the develop module and sort of kind of tweak this image a little bit to see what kind of details available in it, um, if we just put up the, the exposure, the Milky Way Galactic Center is visible, but you know you can see a lot of color model and uh, you know just, just a lot of grain. So what we're going to want to do is we're going to want to combine this image 
with the rest of the images that I took in sequence with it. I recorded just over 30 exposures for this particular sequence. So what we're going to do is we're going to combine the data from all 34 of these frames together into a single image. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm just going to select one frame and I'm going to enter the develop module by pressing D. And we're just going to increase the, the exposure of this image just a little bit. Um, I just sort of want to be able to see some of the detail in the night sky. I mean, there is a lot of noise in this image, but uh, the process that we're going to put this through is going to really reduce that noise. So I'm going to increase the exposure about two and a half stops. And uh, by increasing the exposure, I'm sort of blowing out the highlights in, in the cities below. So uh, I'm just going to sort of try to recover those a little bit by, by pulling down the highlight slider and maybe the, the white slider as well. We want to kind of re retain some of the original color that was in that part of the image. Okay, and I think I'm, I'm actually going to tweak this just a little bit darker. That's just about right. Okay, so once I've made one edit and I kind of have like a, you know, a, a good idea of the detail. Nothing is too dark and I can see some of the detail in the night sky. Um, you know, it's, this is kind of like a good sort of neutral preliminary edit. Um, I'm going to go ahead and apply this same edit to all of the images in my sequence. So if I go to the grid view here, now I have all of my images already selected. And you can select your images by clicking on one, the first one in the sequence, holding down shift, and then clicking on the last image in the sequence. And then I have my uh, edited image selected, and then all I have to do is go over to the side here and click the sync settings button. And we're just going to sync all of the settings here, so you can click the check all button and then click synchronize. And that will synchronize that uh, exposure edit that I made to all of those images. So in order to combine these exposures into the final image, we're going to need to align those images together. And with a sequence like this, where the motion is relatively complex, I found that the best way to do that is through Adobe After Effects. So we're going to go ahead and export all of our images uh, to JPEGs, and then we're going to import them into Adobe After Effects as a JPEG sequence. So I'm going to go ahead and just select the fol folder where I want to uh, save all of my images, and I'm going to save them with a custom name and the original file number so that they all stay in order. And for this demo, I've decided to limit the width of my images to the same resolution as a 1080p uh, movie. And one of the reasons for that is that it's going to reduce my processing time. It will limit the final size of my image to uh, 1920 pixels wide. If you want to create a much higher resolution final image, you don't need to resize your image when you do this export. Just keep in mind that your processing time is going to increase drastically when you use a much higher resolution set of base images. And I'll go ahead and click export. Okay, so now that we have all of our original exposures exported from Adobe Lightroom, we're going to bring them into Adobe After Effects. So in order to import these as a JPEG sequence in After Effects, we can double click into this blank section in the project toolbar. If you don't see the project toolbar, you can open it by using Command-0 or Control-0 that opens and closes that project toolbar. So I'm going to double click and that opens the import file dialog box. And then I'm going to go ahead and select the very first exposure in my sequence. And you can see that it says JPEG sequence. And that means that Adobe After Effects recognized our group of JPEGs as an actual sequence. So we'll keep that checked and then click open. And that brings our JPEG sequence into the project and we're going to create a new composition from this JPEG sequence. A uh, quick way to do that is to just drag the sequence down to the Create New Composition button at the bottom of the project palette and release. And that'll give us, uh, it'll bring our sequence down into the timeline. And the very first thing that we do uh, straight off the bat is we can just right click on that sequence and enable the warp stabilizer and that'll automatically stabilize our images together 
so that they track a little bit better. We'll have a little bit less of the up and down motion of the camera. But warp stabilizer is always the first thing that I run on the JPEG sequence. Okay, when warp stabilizer is finished, uh, we can hit spacebar and take a look at how the sequence uh, was stabilized. Running through the sequence, it looks pretty stable. Uh, there's a little bit of motion of the stars. It looks like the stars in the top right corner here just kind of move up slowly during the sequence. Um, so we're going to do another step after, after this to uh, stabilize those stars even more. Okay, so in order to reduce the motion of the stars in the top portion of the frame, uh, we're going to run another stabilization technique on uh, the image. So we'll go ahead and go back to the, the project toolbar. Um, and we can see this composition here. This is the one that we ran warp stabilizer on. And we're going to create another sub composition from that. So I'm just going to drag this composition down into the create new composition button again. And this is the composition that will run the stabilization tracking on. Um, so we'll be using this little tracker toolbar. If you don't see the tracker toolbar, you can open it by going to window and then selecting tracker. So in the tracker toolbar, we're going to use the stabilize motion tool. So you can go ahead and click that button and uh, that'll give us this little tracking point in the, in the center of the, the view. And uh, that tracking point is for position tracking, and we also want to do rotation tracking. So we're going to click this little checkbox that says rotation, and that'll give us a secondary tracking point. So what we're going to do is we're going to take these two tracking points, and we're going to put them on some relatively bright stars at the top of the frame. We want to use stars that show up in relatively high contrast areas. So I'm going to use this one in the top right corner, and then I'll probably pick another in the top left corner. I'll go ahead and use this blue star here. And once we have both of our tracking points set on relatively bright stars, we can go ahead and tell the tracker tool to analyze all of the frames forward of the first frame. So we'll click this button and the sequence will run through and try to keep the tracking points on the stars. And we can sort of double check the motion of the tracker to make sure that it worked. And if we use spacebar to play back the sequence, we should be able to see the tracker following the star across the sequence. That one seems to work, have worked relatively well. And if we look at tracking point one and do the same thing, and we can see that it tracked that star pretty well. So when we're satisfied with its tracking, we can go ahead and click apply. And we want the stabilizer to apply tracking in both the X and Y dimensions. So we'll leave it at the default of X and Y and we'll click OK. So now when we play back the sequence, the sequence is almost perfectly stabilized to the sky. So that sums up the quick work that we're going to do in After Effects. Our next step is to turn this sequence into something that we can import into Adobe Lightroom for the final sequences. So I'll go ahead and export this sequence. I'm going to go to File, Export, and then Add to Render Queue. I want a file that's going to be relatively quick to import into Adobe Photoshop. So I'm going to go ahead and make a custom output and we're going to use the QuickTime format here, and I'm going to go to Format Options and actually save this as a TIFF sequence. TIFF is a relatively high quality format, and it'll translate really well into layers in Photoshop, so we'll use TIFF sequence for this particular project. I'm going to leave the image output to its default size, and I'm going to go ahead and give it a, an output location and a file name, and click Render. And so now this video is ready to open up into Adobe Photoshop. So I'm going to go ahead and open Photoshop. I'll go to File and then Open. And I'll select our movie file and click Open. So when you open up a video, you'll automatically get this timeline toolbar. So what we want to do is we want to take all of the frames of our video and convert them into layers in Photoshop. And the quickest way to do that is in the top right corner of the timeline toolbar, there's this little drop down options button. 
If you click that, you'll get this menu, and we want to go to Convert Frames, and we want to flatten our frames into clips. And that'll actually create uh, individual layers from each of our video frames. So now if we look at the Layers dialog box, you can see that we have all of our frames as layers. So I'm going to select all of the layers by selecting the top layer here, scrolling down, and then selecting the bottom most layer. And we can ignore this video group layer. And with all of those frames selected, I'm going to right click and select Convert to Smart Object. And Adobe Photoshop's Smart Object tool allows you to combine the data of many different layers into a single layer using uh, different types of filtering algorithms. So in this case, we're going to use the stack mode called Mean. And what that does is it takes the average of each pixel of each layer and combines them together and calculates the average brightness and color of that particular pixel. And by taking the average of 30 frames in this case, it'll give us significantly less noise and it'll output an image that has much finer detail, especially in the area where we stabilize the sky. All right, so when the stack mode is complete, uh, this is a view of our final image. As you can see, it almost completely eliminated all of the noise, and we can really see some detail in the Milky Way. Since we didn't stabilize to the ground, the ground looks like a streaky blur on the bottom, as if we were making a significantly longer base exposure in a single image. But in this case, it's just a combination of our 30 plus quarter second images to create this final image that sort of simulates a much longer exposure. So now that all of my exposures are averaged together into this final image, I'm going to go ahead and flatten the image. And it's going to ask us if we want to discard the layers from the animation. That's OK. And then we're ready to save. So I'll go to File and Save As. And I'm going to save this as a TIFF. So I'll go ahead and select that and click OK. All right, so now that this is saved as a TIFF, we're going to go ahead and import that file back into Adobe Lightroom. So I'll enter the develop module by pressing D. And straight away, I think this image needs a little bit more contrast. So I'm actually going to go down to the tone curve here. And I'm going to drag up the highlights a little bit. And I'm going to pull down the shadows. And since the bottom of the image is significantly brighter than the sky, I'm going to use a graduated filter tool to sort of bring up the detail in the sky. I'm going to go ahead and dial in the exposure on the tool at first. I'm going to go ahead and just increase it a little bit, maybe like a stop or so, and then drag it down right over the horizon. And I'll go ahead and adjust this a little bit. And I think that's a little bit too bright, so I'm going to, I'm going to drag it back down a little bit. And now we can do some of our finer edits. I'm going to go ahead and increase the contrast. And I'm going to increase the clarity to try and make the Milky Way pop. And we'll bump up the saturation a little bit just to bring out some color. All right, I think that looks relatively good for the graduated filter tool. And beyond that, I'm just going to make a few last tweaks to the tone slider. I'm going to bring down the whites just a little bit to try and subdue some of the brightness of the city below. And I'll do the highlights as well. And then we'll give the whole image just a little bit of punch with the clarity tool. And looking back at the tone curve, I'm going to tweak the shadows just a little bit more. Maybe bring up the black point slightly. And then I'm going to adjust the highlight side of the tone curve again, just to give it a last little bit of punch. So when you compare our final image to a single exposure that we made, you can see a lot more detail in the Milky Way, and it looks like we use a significantly longer exposure something more on the order of about 15 to 20 seconds rather than the much shorter exposure that we actually used. So we took multiple sequences of exposures while we we're on this flight and these are some of the other results that we ended up getting. Depending on how much motion that we had in the images, alignment of the Milky Way wasn't 100% successful. You can see in the corners of some of these images there's a little bit more star blurring. So it's definitely a little bit of a difficult technique to perfect. But I think it's a really good example of how relatively mediocre single exposures can be combined together to form a really cool final image.
All right, so that pretty much concludes the methods that we use to photograph the Milky Way from an airliner. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. If you want to see more astrophotography videos, please subscribe and check out all of our gear reviews, tutorials, and inspiration on LonelySpec.com. Clear skies.